Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch and today we are talking about an entity component system because these are all the rage right now and we're specifically talking about Flex. Now Flex was released uh, about a month back I think and it is an implementation of an entity component system. So if you want to make your game and you're looking for the data type to store all of your data and information in, like I said, the entity component system is all of the rage right now and there's some very good reasons for that. So first on, what is Flex all about? Well, Flex stands for Fast uh, Lightweight ECS or Entity Component System, obviously. And what this is basically, it's a way of organizing data in your game world. I'm going to go into more depth later on. I'm going to do its own video on what an ECS is. But the TLDR version is you've got entities, which is kind of like instances or, you know, everything that is in your game world, the player, the bullets, the, the enemies, the levels, all that stuff those are all entities each one of them is basically an instance a lot of times an entity literally is just an id a unique id identifying a thing that exists in a world those entities in turn have things called components components can simply be thought of as data and then you've got systems systems work on components and that's it a very straightforward concept but what it does is it breaks things up in a couple of ways that are really advantageous for one it allows you to take advantage of multiple gpu or cpu cores which is kind of the way that microarchitectures are going these days it's a logical way of breaking your things up into uh different pieces and there's a reason why unity is migrating towards ecs as part of their dots migration but anyways back to flex what is flex all about well this is an open source c9 99 API. And actually, I believe the author said it's actually C89 compliant. So this is some very, very portable code. You could implement this into your C++ code, into your, well, obviously, your C code, or you can do bindings to other languages with minimal effort because C is almost like the universal language. Um, it's a uh, Okay, so let's go through the highlight stuff here. Here are some things you could do. Process entities on multiple threads with lock-free zero overhead staging architecture. Like I said, very good for the modern microarchitecture that we're going with these days. Since you don't have these dependencies between the systems and the data, um, it allows you to basically just look at raw data and parallelize the hell out of it because there aren't all of these you know, interdependencies between this piece of data and that piece of data or this piece of data and this code that works on that data. Um, so you can organize components and systems into reusable library-friendly modules. So that's basically just a way of um, cleanly splitting your code out into multiple files. Uh, run systems every frame periodically on demand or change events. Now this is actually pretty important. So systems, again, are the code that makes your game do stuff. So you can think of like, you could have a um, physics updater system and it will run on all of the physical objects in your scene. Well, what this allows you to do is specify how it will run. So you can have systems run every frame periodically when you need them, or you can actually have them monitor to change events. So if you have have, um, say, a, a hit point or a health. Say you had a health component in your system and one of the tracks was hit points. You could have it when hit points equals zero. So when the hit points are changed, that could trigger off a kill or dispose function for players in your world. So that's what you could do there when defining your systems. Additionally, Flex has a uh, Flex has a flexible, okay, that's hard to say, engine that lets you do many um, many things like an expression prefab system with prefab variants, component overrides, and nested prefabs. If you've ever used something like Unity or Godot or uh, such, you, you probably already know what a prefab is. It's basically like a template. You, you define your own entities and components and so on that all go together, and you say, okay, this is a predefined, this is a car. This is a dog, this is a duck, and so on. Uh, so you can basically predefine, uh, you would use it a lot of times like if you defined like a house and you wanted to be able to just drop a house in as opposed to making it up out of all of its constituent parts, you create a prefab. Um, also create specific expression um, Systems expressions with and or not and optional operators. Now, this is actually really important. So as I mentioned earlier, systems run on all of the comp compatible um, components. So when a system runs, it runs on all the components that match its requirements. So if a component was like, say, movable, and you use that for just about every single um or say you had transform and you had a transform component for every single entity in your game, that system could really bog down. But this allows you to say and or or not. So basically you could say if this thing has the component um, transformable, but it also has the component uh, vehicle, then we'll run it. It's a way of narrowing things down. So you're only running the system on certain things, but it also allows your system to know that it has all of the data that it needs to actually operate. So it's a way of winnowing down the number of components that that system has to run on, but it also ensures that that system has only what it needs. And um, 
that's why and or not operations come in. Uh, finally, you can create hierarchies, indexes, DAGs. This should probably not be used as an acronym because you have to look this one up um, with container entities. A DAG stands for Directed Acyclic Graph. It's a hierarchical data structure. Think of it like a tree or a BSP. Uh, anyways, the simplified version. There is more documentation if you're interested in learning more about DAGs. Um, so yeah, that is kind of essentially it. Here you see their overview of what an ECS is all about. Um, so you see their definition it has entities that are unique identifiers. Like I said, you have a user, uh, an int or a float or a grid or something that uniquely identifies each entity in the world. Uh, so it gives you the way to you know find them or refer to them. Uh, components, which is straight old data types, can be added to an entity. And then systems, which again, run on matched entities and do stuff. Don't worry, we'll get to an example in just a second. Speaking of examples, Flex has an incredibly good uh, manual going on. So this is the nice thing. You want to go ahead and use it. It is incredibly well documented, which is very cool. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here is phases. Now, this is uh, where you would normally see it if you did your, you know, if you're using a game object or um, a node in GD or something, you, you have these different phases in the game lifecycle that would be triggered for that instance. This instead works on the system level, but you see the various places where systems can be triggered on load, post load, pre update, on update, on validate, post update, pre store, on store. Um, also, you could do things based off of reactive, so on add, on remove, on set of values to a component. So like I said, if you wanted to trigger when a uh, health value was toasted or something, or you could just basically straight on adding a component to an object triggers off an event. So that is kind of how things are done. Uh, but you see here, we got a straightforward example of how code actually works. So you see, uh, we've got move. This is a system. Uh, in this particular case, a system is simply a function. It is passed in rows of data from the ECS itself. Um, and goes through the columns of said rules. So if you've ever worked with a spreadsheet, you've got an idea of what you're dealing with. Now this system has velocity and, well, sorry, position and velocity as values passed into it. Those are going to be fine in just a second. So here we are in your game entity. This is all it takes to really set up and run an ECS using Flex. So see here, we're creating a world. This is where all of our entities are actually going to be stored. We create it by calling ECS init. Then we are going to define some components. So in our world, we define a component named position and we define a component named velocity. Now those are just simply structures. So you can see they're defined up here. Um, but those, so now we have two components that can be used. And here we are going to um, enumerate, enumeration constant ECS on update. Okay, that's a bad comment. Uh, so we got world and we're defining move is so the system move or the function move is called ECS on update and it requires position and velocity. So pretty straightforward there. So you basically you're registering in the world. We've got the system named move. It's called on ECS update and it works with position and velocity. And so you saw when we actually used it here, it had access to them right there. And then finally, uh, ECS entity world, we add our entity into it, or actually we're defining an entity here, my entity position and velocity. Um, and then here we go ahead and use it. So set, and then we're setting the values on my entity that we just created. So you see here, position is uh, passed in. Where's position coming from? And then here we're, we're passing in a value of 10 and 20. Um, and then finally, when we are done, uh, we, we basically just shut down. Now in some of the other examples, if you jump into it, um, there's a Pong example and so on. It shows you more of how to actually handle a game loop and other things. I guess I should at this point in time mention a few other things about Flex itself. Uh, it is available under the MIT license. If you come here into the examples category, you will find a number of uh, very nice, simple, straightforward presentations from like a Hello World project to you know simple movement. Um, and then prefabs, using prefabs. This is one of the most robustly documented new libraries I've seen in a long time. So you've got a lot of great examples to work from. And then the title I mentioned, it's also got a bit of a superpower in that. And that is the dashboard. Now this is actually really cool. This is kind of like a real time profiler that goes with your entity component system. This runs in your browser alongside your app, completely optional. You don't have to use this, but if you want to like kind of get the guts of what's going on in your game, you can see here, it's broken down into various different categories. So you've got an overview, you've got the performance details, memory details, and systems details. 
So in the overview, you can see a number of the different features that are running, the systems that are running, the number of entities attached to those systems, the memory, the amount of memory being used and how it's being used. So you can see the majority here is being used by components, for example. And then we've got the frame rate that we're running at, the number of entities in our system, the total amount of memory being used. We get into the performance details. You can see how long things take to load. Um, the system, what, what systems are using the most data. So you see here, SDL input is a bit of a pig in this particular re uh, running. And you can use this to kind of, um, you know, figure out bottlenecks in your code. Again, we've got also memory uses. So you see components that are using memory. Uh, you see the uh, particular components that are actually in the entities and the amount of memory being used by them. So if you need to profile or figure out how your game is running or why performance bottlenecks are kicking in, uh, so on, this could be a very handy tool. Uh, and then finally, we've got systems. So we can see all the various different systems that are running. So we've got 48 systems, 37 are running. Um, sorry, 37 are hidden, 17 on update systems, seven manual systems, 14 are reactionary. You got a breakdown of what's going on. You can turn them off uh, on the fly. So, you know, if you want to just disable the system for running, you just click and it's gone. Um, so this is the uh, dashboard functionality, definitely a bit of a hidden superpower with the Flex system. Uh, one thing to be aware of, this guy is actually under the GPL license. Um, that is the... The MIT license basically allows you to do whatever the hell you want. Where the GPL license means if you use this code, that code being specifically for the dashboard, not the underlying Flex library. But if you change the dashboard code, you also have to redistribute your changes with it. So um, any changes you make to Flex need to be made available as uh, source code changes. Um, but that doesn't apply to the underlying license. I don't have a problem with GPL used in uh, products or like you know Blender or front ends like what you're seeing here with Flex. It's libraries that are GPL that kind of don't work for me. Uh, if you're interested, the documentation uh, for Flex is available as part of the getting started guide. So you see here how you go about using this. So starting the dashboard, it uses a system called Bake. Um, so Bake clone that guy and then that guy those two modules, and then when you want to go ahead and run it, you do, so you create your new package or your new project, and then you run it using bake run my app dash a admin 990. So that's the port to run on, and then you just basically open up your browser to the local port at 990, and then you can go ahead and um, you go into the dashboard, see what's going on, and as I mentioned earlier on, you can uh, turn things off and on, uh, disable them, see profiling, see how uh, the performance of your game is actually going. Very cool tool. Uh, amazing how mature this entire project is. So anyways, that is it. That is Flex. Now again, I'm glossing over some of the entity component system stuff. If you are interested in a dedicated video about explaining ECS, the pitfalls, the strengths, the, the weaknesses, and so on, I can do that as a cover-up video. I think it'd definitely be interesting because more and more of the world is going towards ECS. But do let me know what you think of that. And also let me know what you think of Flex in general. I, I'm impressed personally. But uh, yeah, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.